Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. I'm your host, Terry. Um, coming to you from uh, America's Dairyland, Wisconsin. You know, um, so today's the 25th. I'm sorry, the sun's a little bright, but I didn't want to put my sunglasses on. Uh, today's the 25th of August. Interesting birthdays and death dates today. Kind of thematic almost. So born on this day, um, four people I know you've heard of that were were or are in the entertainment industry. Um, Sean Connery, born on this day in 1930 in Scotland. Um, born on this day, 1931, Regis Philbin, who I always thought was a pretty funny guy. Um, and then in 1954, Elvis Costello was born on this date. And in 1958, I believe, Tim Burton, uh, who's got a new movie coming out, right? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is coming out. I think it releases maybe 6th of September. I don't know why that rings a bell, but I saw commercials for it when I was at home. So filmmaker Tim Burton, born on this day. So for notable entertainment people um <coughs> who died on this day oh <coughs> sorry um john mccain and ted kennedy both died on this day not the same day but this date also who passed away on this day date in 19 in uh, 2012 was uh neil armstrong first man to walk on the moon yeah he walked on the freaking moon okay um so just some interesting passages there um so i i got a load on my back that i just just hooked but um and i gotta deliver this down in indiana tonight but yesterday i had a load that i picked up the other day what day was that? Must have been Thursday in New Jersey, in um, Edison, New Jersey. I picked up a load of sugar, and it was in those <coughs> excuse me, in those bulk tote things. So it was just like giant bags of sugar on pallets, right? And um, it was a pretty heavy load, as you can imagine. So I brought it to a bakery in uh, outside of Milwaukee. And right after I backed in, the guy came out and he, to put a lock on my, uh, you know, an airline lock, put it on my glad hand. And, he, and I was outside the truck and he said, hey, um, this sugar's pretty hard. That was the term he used. And I'm not sure if our QA people are gonna um, accept it. So I just wanna let you know that. I was like, okay. But here's the interesting thing about this load. Um, when I went to pick it up, I said, you know, they're like, oh, back into door two. I'm like, what do you want the reefer set at? Because they're really, my company, you know, like if you're a prime, you know that you can put the word dry, like if you're picking up a load at Shaw or whatever. Um, you can put the, lo the word dry in the temperature block on the app to you know when when you're doing your loaded call but at my company you can't put the, any word in there it has to be a number although interestingly my company's app will take the numeral zero as a temperature but primes wouldn't it either had to be minus one or, or one it wouldn't take zero but anyway I don't understand all this technical mumbo jumbo. But anyway, so I said to the lady, I said, what do you want my reefer set at? She's like, oh, this is all a dry warehouse. Everything, you know, you don't need to turn your reefer on. I'm like, okay. So, you know, this dude loads all this freaking giant bags of sugar in. I think it was, I want to say 21 pallets. And um, so close the doors. I get two two pieces of paper. And I should have known that there was something a little off about this load when I got to the receiver because I handed him the two pieces of paper, which were basically a one-page bill, but two copies, 
two copies of it. And he's like, is this all you have? You don't have any, um, like, certificate of purity or whatever, you know, they look for food grade um, analysis, etc. And it was kind of funny because yesterday I was talking with my son about a load that he had of shortening, bulk shortening, same thing. They He didn't have the paperwork and they wouldn't accept it. So anyway, the guy's like, all right, we'll back in. So he gives me that warning about, hey, this sugar seems kind of hard. He goes, but I'll get our QA people. So I, I was a little tired because I kind of drove over you know, through the night from Eden, Ohio to get to this delivery. I, I think I left the truck stop in Eden around, around four. And uh, so I got to my delivery a little early because I picked up an hour coming into central time zone. A guy comes out, he's got my bills, he's got a new seal, and he's got, um, he's got, he's like, hey, uh, we're rejecting this load because it's hard. And it just so happened, so I sent an OS&D report, but I also sent an empty call um, so they would know that I, you know, was able to pick up my next load. But the funny, but I sent a note and I said, hey, um, I, I'm not empty. I'm going to bring this to the terminal because it's Saturday morning. And the guy at the, at the, at the receiver was like, and, and the receiver was a Campbell's Foods. It was like um, Campbell's Foods, but it's Snyder Lance Snacks. But anyway, <coughs> excuse me. I, um, you know, I send a message and I say, hey, uh, they've rejected this entire load, but I'm just going to bring it to the terminal. I'm not going to sit around and wait for somebody from Domino's to figure out what to do on a weekend. And I should tell you that this is only the second load of sugar that I've ever hauled. Um, the only the second load from Domino's and both times it was messed up. The first time I tried to pick up at the Domino sugar plant in Baltimore City and they kicked me off the property because they were just being they were just being assholes to drivers all the drivers i just wouldn't put up with it but i was a brand new driver and they were trying to you know break bad on me like oh i'm not used to the big city and it was ironic because i i used to have offices like a mile away from that domino sugar like i'm used to the big city right and um and they kicked me off the property and uh the funny thing was, they got me a night, this was when I was at night, night got me a new appointment, they wouldn't let me back on the property, like security wouldn't let me back on the property for my second appointment, and I, I remember the conversation with my, drive, with my terminal manager, and he was like, man, he was from Mississippi, he's like, man, fuck them, just come on home, man. So I did, because I was actually getting ready to go on home time. So I just drove the empty trailer back to Carlisle. And I was a little worried that I kind of overstepped the bounds of my authority, because I was a new driver. And I was like, man, that, you know, like, we didn't pick that load up. And, and he wanted me to pick it up and just bring it to the yard. And, um, and then go on home time. So... But I found out later on that I really didn't do anything wrong because I got I had 150 bucks show up in my paycheck for the hassle. Like I didn't ask for it, he just paid it to me. So I've always said I liked my driver manager and terminal manager at night, and that was one of the reasons. Cause they you know, they they knew I ran hard and, and they they always had my back, you know. So anyway. This loaded Domino Sugar, I did bring all the way back to the terminal, but I got a phone call on the way back, and I thought it was night dispatch, weekend dispatch, but it actually was my my driver manager, who happened to be working yesterday, I guess, and she was calling about a different issue, like I hadn't accepted the loads that, that um, the pre-plans I had, so it wouldn't, like, do it automatically. I, sh I was like, oh yeah, sorry about that, and she, she put it in, but then I told her what happened, and I said, you know, it, it seemed odd to me that they would, because you know, when you buy sugar at the grocery store, you buy a five pound bag, that thing might be hard as a rock, right? But you still buy it. Why? You go home, 
and you know you, you pound on it with your fist while it's on the table and it just loosens the sugar up and so to me I was like oh the sugar's hard like I didn't think it was that big of a deal but then I said to her apparently this is un like should be known to Domino Sugar or Americold where I picked the stuff up um, but I think they should run these loads it because it, sugar if as you know absorbs any humidity any moisture in the air right same with salt so that's why you see people that put rice with in salt shakers that's why you see people put rice in you know like a they'll put a bag of rice and cheesecloth in a big thing of sugar to keep the to keep the moisture absorbed but i i said to my driver manager why wouldn't why wouldn't they just run this temp control why wouldn't they just say oh set the set the reefer at 60 degrees because even even at 60 degrees it's the, that reefer is going to remove humidity from the inside of the trailer because I loaded in New Jersey and if you've been to New Jersey and this place in Edison was no different most I would say half of New Jersey is a swamp and you know look at the Meadowlands look at <coughs> excuse me look at all those areas like there was a legit swamp or you know wetland right at the edge of the parking lot where I was loading. Well, there's the humidity around those is always going to be higher, right? It's the summertime and they got these bags of sugar just sitting in a warehouse and then they put it in a trailer and I'm driving it across America in the summer. And, you know, it's kind of funny because when I left Eden, Ohio at 4 a.m. on Saturday morning, the trailer, there was a guy parked next to me and, you know, he must be a flat better at heart because he pulled straight into a parking spot next to me with his split axle reefer trailer. And that trailer, it was like sweating to beat the band. I mean, there was just water running across the parking lot. And I don't know if that's an insulation problem, but it was sweating to beat the band. But even my truck had some had some dew on it and you know all of that is an indicator of humidity because you wouldn't see my truck or his reefer behaving like that in Arizona for example or Nevada or Utah right the air is drier so so there's a lot of humidity in the air on the east coast it's you know I'm going from New Jersey to Wisconsin I'm going you know it's not it's not the driest part of the country. And so I was wondering aloud, why don't they, why wouldn't they want the reefer on to keep that stuff dried out if this is such an issue? So I don't know the answer to any of that, just a thought, but that trailer has been dropped. It's got a seal on it. I turned the bills in, I'll get paid for it. That's all I care about, you know? I mean, I don't, you know, you know what's really funny is that I got this load going to Indiana and then I got a pickup at Coke, Coca-Cola in Paw Paw, Michigan. And I picked up there before when I was at Prime. That load's coming back to Kenosha. Uh, so I'm not sure that there won't be a load on me that says, come back to the terminal, get this load of sugar and take it back to New Jersey. So I would not be shocked if I end up dragging that load back to New Jersey to the same warehouse or wherever Domino Sugar decides it needs to go. But I knew when they rejected it, I'm like, no one's gonna come up with an answer for this this weekend. And that's why I didn't even hesitate. I was just like, I'm taking it to the terminal and getting it off my back. So yeah, I just um, got my paperwork done for the week. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a procrastinator. That's what people with ADD do. Um, but I also, I also went to Hoo hot last night here in, in Wisconsin, and that was pretty delicious. So, no complaints. Um, and you know, it 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 even is um, reasonably priced, like compared to what I'm seeing at other restaurants. It's still pretty reasonably priced. Um, so, no complaints.
late, sir. Anyway, I am going to be back on the road here in about, uh, I'll probably go on duty in about 10 minutes and get this truck and trailer inspected and then head down to Indiana. So be safe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.